Well, Fox News alert a gunman opening fire inside a large shopping mall in Maryland. And this is confirmed at least three people have died at the scene that you see there in the center of your screen. Police say they believe the shooter is among those who are deceased at this hour. Welcome to America's News Headquarters. I'm Harris Faulkner in today for my friend Arthel Neville. And I'm Greg Jarrett. Well, this shooting happened at the mall in Columbia. That's just outside Baltimore. And officers were called to the scene shortly after 11 a.m. this morning. The shooting happening at a store on the upper level. This is two levels of an enclosed shopping mall, about 202 stores there, including some major ones, Lord & Taylor, Nordstrom's, Macy's, J.C. Penney, and so forth. Uh, hundreds of officers have descended on that mall. Molly Henneberg is live at the scene with more. Molly, what's the latest? Greg, police say they don't know the identities of those who were killed. They don't have a motive yet. They're just beginning. They're just a couple of hours into this. Three dead. One of them, and this is why they believe this person was the shooter, one of those that is dead was found near a gun and ammunition. So the working assumption is that this person came in, shot the two other people, and then turned the gun on him or herself. That's the assumption right now. They are still conducting interviews, but that's sort of what they're going off from the mall here. Uh, as far as the situation right now, there are still people sheltering in place. The local police chief said, unfortunately, people are kind of learning what to do in these situations, and they knew to shelter in place, put a barricade around them, and try to remain as quiet as possible until the threat had passed. So police officers are now going through this mall, store to store, nook and cranny to nook and cranny, finding people who had responsibly sheltered in place, telling them it is safe to come out, and then escorting them out of the building. And then they're conducting some interviews. That's what's going on now. They say there are still many, many people inside of this mall. We spoke to one person who was in the mall with his little daughter, his little two-year-old daughter. He heard three shots. At first, he thought it was firecrackers. Then he realized what was happening. He grabbed his daughter, ran into a hallway with about 35 other people, and they tried to uh, keep themselves safe there until it was safe to escape through one of the doors. Um, so now the evacuations are going on right now. The mall is closed, obviously, until further notice. The police will update us again at 4 o'clock. Greg. Molly, um, during the news conference with the chief of police, there were a couple of questions posed which proved to be very revealing. One was, uh, you know, did any law enforcement uh, engage the shooter? Did, did law enforcement fire the weapons? And the chief said no. And then another question was, um, was the suspected gunman already dead when police arrived? And the answer was yes. So I suppose there are two possibilities here, um, murder-suicide, the gunman turned a gun on himself, or somebody else managed to grab a gun and kill him. Um, are you getting any additional information on that? We asked if this was a domestic situation. Somebody comes to the mall with a purpose to shoot specific people for some sort of domestic reason. The police chief said they can't comment on that right now. They're still investigating. As far as how the gunman died. Our best information is the, that they told us that the, the person they believe is the gunman was found dead on the floor with a gun and ammunition near him. We believe, we believe that, and the police said their working assumption is that that person killed himself or herself. Uh, and that's what the police came upon when they arrived on the scene. Yeah, very sad situation. But uh, uh, I suppose they are still going through all 202 of those stores to make sure the people who were not hiding in closets or bathrooms or inventory rooms uh, are safe mm -hmm. and can be found and alerted that the situation is presumably over. Molly Hennenberg live at the scene. Molly, thanks very much. Yeah, Harris. you bring up a good point. I mean, some people in that mall don't even know that this thing has concluded and they're still hiding out. Uh, just a short time ago, you heard Molly talking about it there. The Howard County Police Chief Bill McMahon uh, went before reporters and was talking about the scene. We can watch a little bit of that now. So about 11.15 this morning, our 911 center received a number of calls for shots fired uh, at the Columbia Mall. Uh, we had officers quickly get into the area and we were able to identify three victims at an upper level store in the Columbia Mall. Um, one of those victims appears to be the shooter. And at this point, and again, please bear with me, this is two hours, two hours and 15 minutes into the incident. There's still a lot of details we need to confirm, but right now we think that one of the deceased is in fact the shooter. 
we do not think there's any at this point that, that there's any more shooters in or around the mall. Uh, we are going through a process right now. Please think about this on a Saturday afternoon at the mall. How many people may be in there? When something like this happens, people run in many directions, and they also do what actually we've trained people to do, and that's to shelter in place. So right now, we have many, many people still in the mall that have secured themselves inside stores. Our SWAT teams, with a lot of support from agencies throughout the state, at the local, state, and federal level, frankly, um, are going through, as we are holding this press conference, they are inside continuing to clear that mall to make sure there are no more victims. We, we do not think there are, but we want to make sure there are not. And to get those people that have uh, self-sheltered in place out and make sure none of them have any injuries, uh, either from the shooting, again, we don't think there are any, um, but also any injuries that may have occurred in that process, that panic when, when people do shelter. So that's what uh, is going on actively behind me in the mall as we are out here. Um, we do not have the identity of the victims yet. Um, we do not have a motive for the shooting. Again, this is a two hours and 15 minutes into the scene. We are still trying to secure the mall to make sure, again, that, that there's nobody else injured. Uh, and then we are getting our investigators into that crime scene to start doing their work, which will enable me to answer some of those many questions you have that, frankly, I just can't answer right now because I don't have the information. All right, the uh, local chief of police, the situation is over, but they still need to go through every nook and cranny of that mall to make sure that everybody is safe and there is no additional uh, shooter. Now, sadly, this is just the latest of such attacks to make headlines around the world in recent months. Let's take you back. November, Paramus, New Jersey. 20-year-old man opening fire inside the Garden State Plaza. Nobody was injured except the shooter. Police say Richard Shoup then killed himself. September, Nairobi, the capital city of Kenya. Four men went on a rampage inside an upscale mall there with guns, grenades. They killed at least 67 people and paralyzed the city for days. December of 2012, near Portland, Oregon, bullets ripped through a crowd of shoppers at the Clackamas Town Center. Two people died. Another was injured. Cops say the shooter, Jacob Roberts, brought more than 100 rounds of ammunition and magazines there and carried them for days before the attack. Well, and you saw me on my computer there. I've been following the Howard County uh, Police Department on Twitter all day and on the web, and they keep updating now, and they really are encouraged about the fact that while there were so many people there that they feel like they, in short order, can at least go through these mini stores and crooks and, and nooks and crannies to try to find people pretty quickly. Let's talk now with Ted Williams. He's a former homicide detective and criminal defense attorney, and while all of that experience is pertinent, so is this. Ted, you've been to that mall before. What is before those police officers as they try to find people who may not know this whole thing has ended. Well, uh, uh, Harris, what they're going to do is a sweep of that mall. Uh, they now believe clearly that they have control of what they define as the crime scene. And so the sweep of the mall will make it a lot easier for the SWAT team to go through. Matter of fact, there will probably be some announcement on the intercom systems there about the fact that it's all clear. But it's, uh, this has been a very interesting news conference, and I can tell you from everything I've been able to glean here that law enforcement officers are not only in control, but they now know what happened in light of the fact that throughout that mall, Harris and Greg, there are video cameras. And mm. so I'm sure that they have looked at the videotape here. Now, if in fact it is like uh, Molly said that they believe it may be a murder-suicide, uh, one of the things they are trying right now is to try to determine a nexus between the shooter and the individuals there on, on, on the scene. If it's not a murder-suicide, then we know by virtue of what uh, at the, the, the chief said at the news conference that it, one or the other persons would have had a, had a gun and they would have been going back and forth. So it looks as though that this may very well be a targeted kind of a scenario that unfortunately unfolded in the uh, Columbia Mall. As you've said, I've been there many times. My yeah. daughter, Sydney, or I mean my daughter Tracy lives out in that area. So 
I, I'm very familiar with it. You know, it's a cold day. Obviously, we're in the middle of winter now. A lot of people, young people, go to the malls, uh, you know, on a, a busy Saturday morning. This place would have been probably packed. You heard the police chief talking about that. So they really don't know how many people they're dealing with who would have been at the mall. But, Ted, you've been there. Uh, tell us a little bit about the layout, if you will, of this mall and, and what some of the areas of concern are as they kind of look for people now. Because I know Greg had mentioned there are a couple of anchor stores like Lord & Taylor. Yeah, well, well, Harris, you you got uh, uh, quite a few upscale uh, uh, stores. This is an upscale community. There's a movie theater that's that's in, in that mall area. You have uh, Lord and Taylor's. You have a lot of upscale shops there. So what they're having to do is go through each and every one of those stores to make sure and uh, uh, and to talk to and interview each and every person uh -huh. as they come out of these various stores because they're trying to determine if there are witnesses other than the video cameras that they would have as to what took place here uh, this morning in that mall. Yeah, that's an interesting point that you make. That They also have to kind of interview these people along the way. You've got fitting rooms that people may have been in, hiding, uh, and what have you. Ted, real quickly, you know, you heard yeah. Greg talking about this. We We've had this happen outside the country and in our own nation, uh, these mall shootings. And, and you heard the police chief kind of allude to it. People are knowing what to do now to hide. As a former detective, what would you do? What do you tell your own daughters if you hear gunshots in a mall? The first thing you do is to drop to the floor, to get to any walls or under any counters that you can. You remain there if you've got a, a cell phone and you can uh, text out. This is the one time you can legally text. You text out messages. You let people know where you are. You remain still. You wait until law enforcement give you the all clear. Ted Williams, pertinent information on this Saturday tragedy has unfolded in his area there on the East Coast. Thank you for joining us. To Ted's point, my pleasure. Associated Press is quoting a lot of people who were inside the mall. Here's one. My husband said, get down. The girl that worked in the store mm -hmm. said, get in the back. And that's where they hid until police yeah. found them there. Here's another one. Laura McKenzie of Columbia works at a kiosk in the mall. She heard between eight and ten gunshots, mm -hmm. followed by people running and screaming. She ran into the back room of a perfume store yeah. and then lock the door. Did you hear that police chief? And he was saying, you know, we've been through drills at these different locations with people. They know what to do. Some of these right. employees have an idea. You know, it's like a fire escape sure. route in your house. You would know. And these employees would have talked about this, at least we hope at some point. Right. It sounds like some of them had some plans. Well, I would imagine the owners of the 202 stores there instruct all yeah. employees here is the plan in the event of some sort of catastrophe here's what you do protect yourself protect your customers as well here's where you go and detectives like ted williams whom i've interviewed about this before say that having that plan will keep you focused in so that right. you can show there's no reason to panic just right. keep moving absolutely all right we're gonna Keep following this uh, breaking news story. We're going to have the very latest three people dead inside a Maryland shopping mall, the shooter believed to be among the deceased as police now trying to figure out what happened, the motive inside the shooting of this shopping mall in Maryland.